This tutorial will show you some basics for creating a text callout for your video. So I'll go through the elements you'll need and talk about some options for fancier callouts and hopefully give you some ideas for your own creations. Now, why would you want to learn this rather than purchasing a callout pack or an FX plugin? Well, you might have a limited budget for one. You might also want to learn some more details on using Vegas Pro such as masking and compositing. There's going to be a short version and a long version that I'm going to give in this tutorial. The short version is just going to run through the different elements of the <clears throat> events that I've created to create a call out. The longer version will go through all the details on creating those elements and applying effects to get your final call out. It'll also go into gotchas that you need to be aware of when you're creating these um, so you don't end up with some text that's backwards and that sort of thing. If you like these videos and you want to see more, please subscribe. If you're watching this someplace other than YouTube, please click on the title link above and leave us a comment and a like. Okay, getting right into it. Okay, the first thing you need to create are several different elements on your timeline. You need a text element, <clears throat> then you'll have to decide what sort of colors you need for the rest of the callouts. Um, this is the compositing child that gives the text itself the gradient effect that we're applying elsewhere. Then we have the box that goes around the text, and then the line that leads toward the marker that'll lead people's eye to the element you want to call out. And then, of course, some sort of marker. Usually it's good to have something other than just the line leading, unless it's very obvious what you're indicating. Um, and then we also have the background that separates the text from the underlying image. If you leave that blank, you run the risk of having your text bleed into the image below it. Now, while you're working on these, you may want to create a solid background uh, for contrast. You can do that, or you can drop an image in there, whichever works better for you. In this case, I started creating these with a white background before I placed any imagery in there. And then, of course, you're gonna have some sort of image background Okay, so the elements for each of these, we've gone into the different events. I chose to start this one with a gradient color. Uh, it's not GPU accelerated, but for this purpose, it's really not that important. Um, but I wanted some gradation of the colors that you see on the screen. No big deal there. There's nothing all that special about the font. I've just got a tech, piece of text in there, and I've chosen which font I want. Now, some of the things that are special about the text, let's begin there, is we've got a mask and we animate it over time so that it grows as we play back. So you can see some of this here. And then of course it shrinks again uh, to go away toward the end. So you've got the masking that's important. Then in the first event, you've got <clears throat> some similar behavior. Uh, again, it's just a, a gradient color. Uh, we're using that to bring out some, to change the text look. This one here has some additional masking just like the text and it's animated so it changes over time, stays there for a while and then disappears. Then the line does exactly the same thing. Uh, it starts off as just a little square and you can zoom into here and see that a little better. Oops, let's not do that. And then it animates over time. And then of course shrinks as the event plays. Then finally the dot at the bottom, or at the end, your actual call out. Again, it's more masking. This has two different masks one that stays static throughout the life of the event playback, and then the other one animates. And you can move that mask any way you want, um, but it gives you just a little detail. It's the small details that really matter with a lot of effects. Um, people won't notice it immediately, um, but if they watch your video more than once, um, it'll really draw their eye to what you're trying to, to show them. So once you have all those events, you're ready to test them. So you're going to spend a fair amount of time coming in here and watching it play. Now, in my opinion, this is a little slow, but it really does depend on what sort of text you have in here. 
Um, if you have a lot of text, if it's just one word, then this is maybe a little slow. Uh, if you're doing something like a, a multi-line call out, you definitely want to leave it up a little bit longer. All of these right now are five seconds long. They could easily, most of these could be four maybe. It just depends on your video. You're going to have to tweak that um, for your purposes. The last thing you're going to want to do is render these out um, so that you can place it anywhere on the screen that you want and size it appropriately. The reason that I group these together is so that I can hide them and show them as needed, but also that I can run them in solo fashion. So it's only going to be the call out. I've muted this track here because most of the time I don't need it anymore. Um, I left it there for instructional purposes. But what you want to do is double click on it. The next thing you're going to want to do is render this as a new track um, so that you can place the call out anywhere on the screen you want and size it appropriately. So go under Tools, Render a New Track, choose your Alpha Render Target. If you haven't created one of these, you can find instructions anywhere on uh, YouTube. And <clears throat> I'll also provide some information in the links below. But choose that, choose Render. And then what you'll end up with is a whole new track that contains just your rendered call out. So let's unsolo that and then we can play this back and you get just that call out. Now what I've also added here is a picture in picture effect that lets me place that anywhere I want. Um, so I can put it anywhere on the screen I want. Typically it's going to be on the left hand side because it's a right hand call out if you you can get away with putting it, you know, a little around, you know, something in the center. Generally works better once you cross that center line if you then use a call out that is flipped. And I'll show you in a longer tutorial how to do that. But with the picture in picture, you can size it any size you want, put it anywhere on the screen you want, and not have to worry about changing masks or anything like that. And it'll play back just the way you saw before. The multi line callback does. You know exactly the same thing. This happens to be a left hand call out um, and you can come in here and resize that any way you want. Okay I'm going to continue the tutorial without the talking head because I don't want to have to go fix my COVID hair. The thing you're going to be wondering now is how do you turn this right-handed call out into a left-handed call out? And you start off by taking your existing call out media, making a copy of it, I will go and mute this track so it doesn't get in our way at any point. And then once you have this copied, just start flipping the tracks. We're going to skip text for the moment because we don't want to actually flip that. I'm going to flip the background color because I want the gradients to match. So we come in here. One thing you'll want to do is make sure in this case you have sync cursor turned off. If it's turned on, go ahead and turn that off now. That way you can put the cursor, view your call out uh, any way you want, but you're going to be editing specific keyframes and you don't want the cursor to be moving around on you. So select the first keyframe, flip horizontal. If you were watching the output, you would have seen the gradient change on the text. Not a big deal at this point. So we're just gonna keep moving down the list. Make sure you select the first position keyframe each time because it may go to the masking uh, timeline instead. Not a big deal. Uh, just <clears throat> you have to remember to select that keyframe. Okay, once you have them all flipped, the last thing to take care of is the text. And you can't flip that because the text will end up being backwards. So instead, what you want to do is move it. So just open up the properties for that event, move it into the box. You'll notice it disappears. That's fine at this point and then go into pan crop, but instead of changing the position, you're going to change the mask. Um, and in this case, we only want to move it in X, so you can come over here and tell Vegas to constrain your movement in X. And then we'll move that to the center, and then just move that over the callouts. Now in my case, I can get away with coming in here and telling it 610, copying that to the clipboard, and then selecting each of these keyframes and just changing the X position that way.
And at this point, our callout flip should be done. Well, that's it for this tutorial. If you like this tutorial and you want more, please give us a like and also subscribe. That'll let us know we should continue doing these. And until next time,